What is up, guys? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 201. And of course, this episode is brought to you by Amazon. If you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon and happen to purchase something that gives us a little kickback and of course keeps the podcast on going. With me is my co-host Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Not much. How about you? I'm just uh, kind of I'm ready for Thanksgiving, but I'm not actually going to yeah. have any turkey this year. So wait, it's, wait, 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 wait. I know. What? <laughs> yep. No turkey? No. I mean, we had a Thanksgiving thing at work on Monday and I had turkey then, but there won't be any turkey tomorrow. We're doing there... brunch. I have a brunch at like 10 a.m. tomorrow and then a dinner and we're doing like a gourmet loaded baked potato bar type of thing. So but it's okay. So like you're not like going vegan or no, but, no, okay. just no just turkey. turkey. I've had four Thanksgiving dinners. Um, and, and it's Wednesday. <laughs> and it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Well, a lot of Friendsgiving. So I had three yeah. Friendsgivings. And then I was at Whole Foods and I was just like, it was in the middle of the day and I needed to get lunch. And they had like, you know, Whole Foods has like their buffet. Yeah. But I, I got, they had like Thanksgiving dinner there and you I was loaded like, up. Yeah. I, yeah, I, it was very expensive, but <laughs> It was really good at the same time. So cool. Um, but yeah, I have like two more dinners. So I'll be, you know, a good 20 pounds heavier. Man. I feel a- after this week, I think just with yeah. all the eating and everything like that. Um, but yeah, guys, let's uh, let's not talk about me getting fat. Let's talk about tech. <laughs> um, and we'll start with our reviews this week. And um, I took a look at another Corsair lighting product. We talked about it last week and we have their IQ LS 100. And this is kind of their take on smart light strips. Um, so we've seen smart light strips. We've seen, I mean, we all know RGB strips are light strips. Yeah. Um, smart light strips are a little bit harder to find, you know, ones that you can control with software. Uh, sure. You know, we have them from Razer, NZXT, maybe a couple others. I don't know who else really offers ones with full software control. Um, but this is Corsair's take on it. So they've done things a little bit differently um, than other companies. When you think of, uh, you know, like a like a light strip or an RGB strip, you think of this really thin, you know, really thin strip. Yep. Um, thin strip with some adhesive on the back and a, a little white remote that looks like this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, well, what they've done is they've made these strips a little bit bigger. You can see they're much bigger. Um, and they put this diffuser on it and that's the good part about it. So the diffuser obviously makes it. So if you've ever attached light strips to say like the back of a desk, you can see each individual, individual LED. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad they've really started to go with, with this diffused light because it, it still looks good, uh, you know, with the normal older style, but this makes it look so much better. Yeah, so the diffuser is awesome um, on the strip. And then you see these little squares right here. So these little squares are actually magnetic, uh, which is really cool. Um, so instead of having like, you know, 3M adhesive on the bottom, they actually give you um, these little squares that you attach the squares to whatever you're attaching this to. Okay. And then the light strips just kind of click in because they're magnetic. Um, and this has its pros and cons, I would say. One is that if you want to mount these somewhere else, you're kind of screwed because you've already attached the little square yeah. to whatever you're mounting them to. Um, so but is the, it a pretty strong magnetic? Uh, like yeah, grip? it's it's not crazy strong. Like you can, it's strong enough where you can put these upside down on something. Okay. Um, but it's like if you bump them, the it, the strip will fall off pretty easily. Sense. Then not pretty easily, okay. um, but if you bump if you bump it, it's going to fall off. Okay. Um, I don't think that's as much of an issue because again, these strips are designed to either go behind a monitor or like go on a desk. Mm. Um, you know, but I just think that once you run out of these little squares, uh, you know, if you want to install this somewhere else, you're kind of screwed. But I think in the same way, the other ones are kind of like that too, because like once you use that adhesive, it's going to be hard to stick it on yeah. something else. Um, so I guess you're kind of screwed both ways, but. Um, the thing that's interesting about these is that they are thick. Um, so my whole idea is I actually wanted them to put them on the outside of this new desk I have. Um, but they're too thick for that. It just doesn't look right because you have this black yeah. piece and all of that. And you then you have the I mean? cabling in between the, the strips themselves. Yeah, it's just not like cohesive to that. So 
what I did is I actually installed them on the bottom side of the desk um, and they look really good. Um, you know, it's, it's just, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know why they're so thick, uh, you know? It, yeah. Because especially, you know, does this use their, um, Capellex, uh, LEDs? Do you happen to know? I'm Cause those sure. are, you know, even smaller and, and, and less power. So I'm, I, yeah, I'm kind of curious too, why they are so thick. Um, cause the diffuser really doesn't look like it's that thick. Yeah. Um, if you, if I go back to the second page here, you know, if you go in, or wait, that's the first page. <laughs> if you uh, look at it, I mean, what is all this? Because here's a diffuser, and then a LED strip should be like super thin, and that should be it. Now, are they flexible at all? Yeah, they do bend. Okay. Um, so you can technically bend these. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what the all the space is. Yeah, so that was just kind of like it. Kind of limits, I guess, where you can put these again. Corsair really designs these for the back of a monitor. So they're just going to put that out there. Like you're, it's not really going to matter how thick they are if they're behind a monitor, you know what I mean? Um, but if you want to mount them to like the edges of your desk, <clears throat> you are, it's just not going to look right in my opinion. Um, so what I did is I installed them on the bottom of the desk. Um, and then it comes with this little uh, controller here. This is their LS100 controller. Um, it has a USB that goes into your computer for control and then it has power. And then you have two, um, you have two inputs for RGB control. So the single kit that you get, um, that's $119 that comes with two long strips and two short strips, which should be more than enough for a decent sized desk, as well as more than enough for a ultra wide monitor. Um, like a dual monitor setup, you might need uh, get it. They have extensions and things like that that you can buy. Um, but that should be more like the starter kit should be more than enough for most people. Yeah. And then, um, everything, of course, because they're, you know, they're called IQ LS 100, everything's controlled within IQ. So, you know, under your devices, you'll see the LS 100 starter kit. And then what you do is under your lighting setup, you have your lighting channels and, you know, we use both channels cause we had some extensions that they sent us as well. Um, and then, you know, you, I selected external RGB light strips. You can select monitor, or, you know, um, and then the order that you have it in. So I had two or how many strips are connected. So I had two short strips and three long strips connected to this one. And then I had one short strip and two long strips connected to the second channel. And then once you have everything set up, you can go in and set your settings. And it was really cool because this is, um, ARGB, not just RGB, is I could actually go in here and select each, each individual, in, yeah, each individual cool. uh, RGB LED. You can see in real time, like with these, if I was in the app, I could move strip over here. You know what I mean? Like I could just move them oh, in just the drag order. It over. Yeah, I can move them in the order that they would mm -hmm. go in, um, which is really cool. So you really have full control on what these are doing. Um, which is really great. You can link them together. Of course, you can link them with other Corsair uh, RGB lighting, like fans in your case or whatever it may be. Yep. The software is awesome. It works great. Um, you know, like here's like where I just selected a handful of um, RGBs. You know, you can go ahead and do that, and it looks really good. Um, I again. I installed these on the bottom side of a desk, but you can even see, even though they're installed it, on the bottom, you have a lot of... Yeah, it gives a good glow on the wall behind there. You know, yeah. So is there quite a bit of light that comes out the side then? Since that, that diffuser is kind of thick, it's not just shining out the top of it, but it looks like obviously some light comes out the side as well. Yeah, so the light comes out the side a lot. I was actually surprised at how much light these give off, even though like my desk is you know decently high off the ground. Right. There's a lot of room for like the light to go places, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, it lights up very well. Um, you can see the different colors here. I mean, it really, wow. you know, <laughs> it really lights things up, especially if you're in a darker room. Um, yep. It just looks great. And what's cool is like, it's with the software. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. You can do like tracking LEDs. Like in our case, um, you know, we could have like, say like a tracking LEDs that start here and go all the way across. You can have them react to music. You can have them react to games. You can do a lot of stuff right. with these. Um, so it's really full RGB control. We weren't able to test it, but they do have um, much like the NZXT ambient kit um, where it reacts to what's going on in your game. Um, because oh, okay. we didn't attach them to a monitor, we weren't able to test that. But from what I've seen, you know, it, it works really well. Um, you know, you can see just like how much light they give off, but 
They're definitely really bright. I like the change as far as the diffuser. I think that that's been needed on RGB strips for a long time. Yeah. Um, but just because of how thick they are, they're not as easy to attach to certain things, if that makes sense. Um, as far as like, it, it would just look weird with a thick thing coming off the edge of my desk. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, they they work fine, like on the bottom or even on the back edge. It probably wouldn't be so bad. Um, but yeah, that thickness and bulkiness of them is kind of odd. But And that's one thing that I, I really wish it would have happened. So when you... Um, so these right here, the three in the middle, those are the magnetic ones. But the magnetic part is only on the back. Um, okay. So it's, I mean, okay. it's only on the bottom. So like this part right here um, yep. on the side, that's not magnetic. Now, if that was, I could line these up flush with the back of my desk and it wouldn't look as weird. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so like, I wish that was, was a thing, I guess. Um, but like I said, for, for smart LED strips or smart RGB LED strips, they work great. Um, you're going to get full control. If you're already in the Corsair ecosystem, it kind of just makes, makes sense. Makes sense, exactly. Um, you know, like <laughs> you're already in the Corsair ecosystem. You can have, if you have, you know, Corsair keyboard and mouse and you might have some Corsair fans in your system. Headset, yeah, everything yeah, synced up. You can have everything synced up. It just makes sense. I don't think the price is too outrageous. 119 um, which would cover pretty much a D like this desk is super big, so it wouldn't cover this whole desk, but it would cover the entire back of the desk. Um, you and know, that's for and, two, two long strips, two short strips, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that would cover like a, a 34 inch ultra wide. It would cover that. No problem. It would cover pretty much, you know, most things. Um, it's just, if you wanted dual, like if you had dual monitors, like dual larger monitors, you might want to get an extension and they do sell extensions. Yeah. Um, we have, I think I have the, the links to, or the, well, maybe I don't to the extensions. Um, oh, I don't, but the, the extensions aren't that much more because again, the starter kit does come with the controller. It, it comes with everything else. Just the extensions are just the strips. Um, so you can, you know, go ahead and add them in. And what's nice about know. it is that you can add them in, um, Sometimes you're kind of just like set with what you have. You can you can't add more strips. There is a limit because of the, uh, I guess, power the load, requirement. Yeah, the impedance and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you should with they sent us both extensions, the 250 millimeter and the 400 or 450 millimeter. I didn't even use all of that on this massive desk. So for most applications, you should be fine. Cool. Um, so check out the review. Like I said, I gave it nine out of ten. Um, again, the only cons of it is that one, uh, the, the, it's thicker than other RGB strips. So it kind of limits where you might want to put it. And I didn't mention that the diffuser, because of what it's made out of, like it, like I dropped it on the floor or on the ground and it just picked up dust. Like it's a dust magnet. So kind of a rubbery um, feel to it or. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Like, um, it doesn't. It, when you play games with a backlight, I, I think I do I do like it more. I've come used to it. Like when I got that NZXT kit, I mm -hmm. just I just like having the backlight. Even now, like I have the lights on behind my screen, and it's, sure, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I don't have mine on. At, I do now. <laughs> you gotta have them on, man. <laughs> gotta have them on. Yeah. Um, there we go. But yeah, guys, check out that review. It's it's good. I think that I think so. I used to have RGB strips just on my desk. And then I got that NZXT kit and put them on my monitor. And I like, I love them behind the monitor. Just yeah. like for any, I've gotten so many questions about it too. Like it just completes my whole setup. It's just awesome. Um, cool. So yeah, so definitely check out that review. And then I took a look at some storage and some portable storage and some pretty hefty portable storage. Yeah, like that. a decent um, amount of portable storage. <laughs> yeah, I took a look at WD's My Passport. This is the 2019 version. Um, they've increased the capacity to five terabytes, which is the highest. Well, you can technically get more storage, but for like a portable drive by a reputable company, uh, five yeah. terabytes is kind of where the max is right now. Um, and the, the thing I like about it is that this drive is still pocketable. Like I can still put okay. this drive in my pocket. It's bigger than like, say like an SSD, but I can still put it in my pocket and it's 100% bus powered. So it's a single wow. cable. You don't need extra power for this um, or anything like that. So do you have it around? I did have it. I have it plugged in. 
Oh, uh, sorry. It's over there. I just, but it's like, it's out of reach. How big it is in your hand. Yeah. It's not very big. Um, it's like their standard size. It, again, it's, okay. it can be pocketed. Um, and that's really what I really like about it. Um, they have it different capacities. I think it starts at one terabyte and goes up to five terabytes for this. Um, very affordable as well. Um, uses USB 3.2 gen one. Um, so basically USB 3.1 since they changed the name all the time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it is a great little drive. The only issue that I had with it is that it uses a type a cable and okay. being a portable drive. Um, means yeah, that, uh, so many ultra books and of course, Mac books, uh, this does work with Mac. Um, no type a port. There's no type a port, uh, even an adapter. I would have been fine with, we've seen portable drives come with adapters. Sure. I just would have liked to see that just for the fact that it's, you know, it's a portable drive and like w there's not a whole lot of ultra books that have type a ports anymore. And if they do, they're like a legacy USB 2.0. Right. Yep. Um, so yeah. So, but the, the drive itself, like I said, very small, very portable. Um, what's really weird is that for the five terabyte version, it's only available in this black here. It's not available in blue or red, which anything four terabyte and below is. So that's a little odd to me. It's kind of weird. Um, but the great thing about this is, and what WD has, do, has done for a while, is that they have software and you don't have to pay extra for it. You know, when you get like a hard drive, you get like a trial or you get, you know, like a year free or whatever of, of some software. And then you maybe, maybe have to buy it later or it's not the company's software. So if something happens, you really can't deal with the company that you actually bought the drive from. Well, with WD, it's all their software. Um, so they have a really nice software package that does everything um, from backup to security to everything. It's all here. Their backup software is super simple. Um, you do set a backup. You can set it uh, to, you know, you select your drive, you select how often you want it to backup. Um, and then you can select different files, different folders, whatever you want to backup every, you know, again, I had it set for hourly, but it's super easy to set up. Um, and then the security, you can set a password on the drive. This drive does offer hardware encryption, which some other drives do not. Um, you have that in there as well. You can also, uh, through their discovery software, like download your complete social media profile, which might be, you know, yeah, um, might be good. If, if that's something you want to do, like you're closing out your Facebook account, you want to download you it. This, back everything up, right? Yeah, this software actually allows you to do that as well. Um, it's just a full package. And that's what I kind of like about this drive when compared to other drives. Like other drives will give you, again, like access to some software for a little bit of time, but you don't get the full version or something like that. You have everything here. Um, it comes on the drive. You don't have to download anything. You know what I mean? You just run it from the drive right. itself. Um, it's just a good drive. Like I said, I didn't really have any issues. It performs just like any of these drives would around like one, 130 uh, so, megabytes a second. Yeah. And regarding uh, performance, old man was asking if they're using SMR uh, technology and they are. In yeah. This drive, so. Yeah. Uh, that's something they've new, newly implemented in the drive. I think it's what allows them to get a high, higher capacity. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So like I said, it performs just like any, you know, USB 3.1 drive would be as far as like being a normal hard drive. Um, and I think, it, I think it's good. I think if you need a lot of storage, this is an easy solution. It's also one that you can just plug in and it will back up all your stuff. You know what I mean? Like you can set the software. So when you plug it in, it just backs just everything up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's pretty, pretty easy uh, to work with there. The five terabyte version is 128.49. A slight premium, I would say for given that's, capacity. That's not too bad though, honestly. I mean, form factor, you know, the software you get, um, I, I think that's a pretty respectable um, price there. And the fact that, you know, like you said, um, hooking it up to your laptop and backing up automatically, like you just take that around all your PCs in your house that have the software on them, you know, run them, run it through, get it back up and then go take that thing down to like your um, safe deposit box at the bank. And there's your backup, <laughs> right? Just like, yeah, throw it yeah. in there and that'd be good. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, it, like I said, when it comes to the portable drives, I love the, my passport. I've reviewed probably at least seven or eight of them over the mm -hmm. past few years. I mean, and the thing is, is I talk about in the review is like when they started doing the, my passport drives, it was just a drive. You didn't get any software. You didn't get anything. WD, you know, made the investment and now they have a full software package. So you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about like, now I have to go research backup software. Like what should I get? You know, I don't have to pay a monthly fee to use a certain piece of software or whatever, you know, yep. it's, it's all there. So that's what I really like about it. 
Um, so check out that review. I gave this one a nine out of 10. And again, the only issue that I really had with it, there's no type C cable. I think in this day and age, you got to start including that. If it's a portable drive, I get if it's not a portable drive because PCs that we're going to have a type a, but yeah. if it's a portable drive, ultra books, max, they're all there. It's all type C now. So you at least, at least include an adapter, if not the entire cable, that's the only thing. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, let's move on to other stuff. And, I finally completed my de- well. I haven't completed my desk setup because it's ever evolving, and I've already like looked at stuff I want to get for it. Um, but I completed the video going over one cable management. You guys complained to me so much about the cable management um, on my setup. It, it, was it was bad. It was a little bit of a mess. It was it was a complete mess, and yep. I didn't. Um, address it when I first built it because for me, I like, I wanted to get the desk built and then get up and running because it wasn't like a, just a setup that I just have sitting over here. It's like what I use. For work what use. Yeah, exactly. So I had to get it set up and just done. And at the time I didn't have everything that I needed. Like I got these really cool, um, under desk cable trays that help hide everything. It just worked out really well. Yeah. Um, I'll bring up me in the video here. Hey. Uh, but yeah, so here's all the stuff that I did. So uh, again, I go over installing the, the IQ LS 100 that we talked about. I have the under desk cable trace. I, I have a monitor arm now. So my monitor that's in front of me uh, nice. is on a monitor arm so I can move it back and forward. Yeah. Um, and the, the uh, head headset um, holder that you, you got, I have one very similar and it looks like it's probably from the same company, the little under desk. Piece. Oh yeah. And yeah, mine, yeah. mine was like a rubber one. Um, and I liked it, but the adhesive just ended up falling off, you know, with, with headsets, oh. um, after some time. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how long yours, uh, last, but yours was uh, like aluminum or metal. So that, yeah. That so cool. the actual, you can kind of see it right here. Yep. Um, it's, so I had that, I had that cooler master one. I liked it. It had a wireless charger. Um, but the, the thing about the wireless charger, and that was kind of the reason I didn't want to stick with it is that it set my phone flat. Mm -hmm. And I want to see notifications. I don't want to have to pick up my phone all the time. Um, So I have one that actually picks my phone up, which you can see here. But I wanted to, I wanted to go to this part of the video because I'm very proud of my cable management. Um, The only cables coming down is my network here and um, some power, uh, some power, and that's it. These cable trays are are just amazing. Um, You put all your cables in there. You don't have to worry about it. It looks great. Um, Let's see if I, you know. Um, on the desk itself, I have that little anchor charger right here. I have my uh, Alexa right there, which that mine's going to cool. go off now. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I got this massive, um, massive mouth master, pad. right? Yeah, it has RGB lighting. And when I have the lights on, you can't see the RGB lighting as much. But I love the big mouse mat. I didn't, I like got it in and I was like, I don't even know if I'm actually going to use this, but I do like using it. It just makes it so I have like one cohesive workspace, if that makes sense. Um, so I have that. Uh, it just works. It works like the whole thing worked out really well for me. Um, you know, like I said, everything in it, it has just worked out really well. And uh, I go over everything in the video. I go over all of my uh, all the stuff I used, how I did it, all that kind of stuff. So definitely check out this video. Um, it's better That's for good one. it's better for you guys to watch it than me try to t- tell you about it and click through the video. Um, so definitely check that out. It's on our YouTube page. So I and I had a lot of fun with that one. That one that one was a lot of fun to do. And I feel like I accomplished something. Like when you do a, like an at, like a regular video review, you're like, okay, a video re- review's done. But like this, like it impacts me every day because I'm sitting at the desk setup and I. I'm yep. here every day. So I really liked like uh, that. I think that arm's going to be real functional for you. Like, you know, you bring it forward when you're working on something and then at the end of the day or whatever, just pushing it back a little bit out of the way, you know? I yeah. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. And the guys in the chat about the RX 5500, we don't know when it's going to be released yet. We will be talking about it here in pretty just soon, a little yeah. bit as we get down to our news. So definitely uh, hang out and uh, we'll hopefully, oh, I don't know when it's going to be released. I don't know, but uh, hopefully it will be soon. Um, but we're move on to case on Friday and I finally picked a build that has nothing to do with travel. <laughs> the last <laughs> yeah. two weeks we had a no suitcases, we had a or... suitcase mod. And then the week after that, we had a sort of like lap, I guess you would call it like, uh, like a... well, it was that, uh, iron Patriot, right? Or the, yeah, the iron, or the iron, iron man. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but this week we have a build inside of the Thermaltake Core P90. Uh, this is called the Core P90 Royalita uh, from mm -hmm. high, res high Resolution Computer Shop. I forget what country they're out of, but they do amazing work and all their builds yeah, are nice. so good. And they uh, they they like take really great pictures of, of their stuff as well. Um, so this is this is the build, and there's so much going on, and it's because it's like in because of the glass, it's kind of hard to see, but there is custom resin here, you know. Uh there's custom there's some every, well, pretty much everything here is custom, but it's just so well done. I'll try to scroll through these if I can. Uh, why is it not letting me scroll through for some reason? Yeah, um, I mean they've got some, you know like all the lines look really nice on, you know, the angles that they chose for their um, tubing and everything looks nice. Yeah. Everything looks like it was meant to be there and, and, and bend that way. So and the looks... colors, the color scheme is like the, the coolant matches yeah. the, the fittings really well and the cabling it, it's done so well. I'm trying to find a good picture where you can see kind of like, uh, so this is like a, it's not necessarily rest, but it runs, the different tubing from side to side and you can kind of see it. It's a custom like the plate distribution there. plate. Yeah. It's a custom distribution plate that they made. That's like really awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's, you know, like I said, that's, it's, that's it's cool. just a really good build. All the lines are great. Um, you can see the custom res over here as well, which looks really cool. Um, yeah, it's just, it, there's so much going on. It's so hard to see. Um, but everything is great with this high resolution computer shop does a great job. Um, so definitely check out this build. And as I always say, um, check out case mod Friday. We have so many builds in there. So if you're looking for, you know, just some motivation to do your own build, some ideas, or some ideas just to see what's possible. Or if you don't, if you're new to modding, you don't even know what it's about, go in there and you'll be like, Holy crap, people do that with computers. <laughs> yeah. you know? uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. So definitely uh, go ahead and check that one out. And then uh, we have our contest still going on. So we are still giving away three of Corsair's IQ uh, QL120 RGB fans. We reviewed those a couple weeks ago. Um, and they're great. They have 36 RGB LEDs in each fan. This is super easy to enter, guys. Um, you can uh, unlock a ton of different entries by you know doing different things. Obviously, it's just a way for us to get back to you guys. So definitely, uh, you know, enter if you can. It is US only. Uh, we're kind of limited on this one. Um, but if you are in the US, definitely get your entry in. Um, there's 20 days left. So uh, a lot of time. time. Yeah, plenty of time. And you could probably, uh, you know, if you're a winner, you can get it just in time for Christmas or whatever. So uh, really cool. So definitely yeah. uh, get your entry in for that. And we are on to news. And this first story it's like something, pretty cool. <laughs> it's really awesome. I don't remember anybody else doing something like this. And it kind of just like brings you back to the old days where people actually did like kind of crazy mods to graphics cards, yeah. I guess. Um, so somebody modded a RTX 2080 Ti and they they took the uh, 14 gigabit GDDR, GDDR6 memory off of it and they upgraded it to 16 gigabit um, GDDR6. So again, the RTX 20, 2080 Ti ships with 14 uh, gigabit, and you can technically overclock that. Over, but sure, but the overclocking headroom isn't great, and you're not going to get great performance. So what they did is they've actually taken the uh, 16 gigabit GDDR6 off of an RT, RTX 2080 Super and put it on put it the card. Which that in itself is like crazy, um, right? Just <laughs> one, yeah. you're sacrificing <laughs> is nuts. one they card. Sac they sacrifice two cards. Um, sure, they, they sacrifice two cards to get the memory off. Then they sacrifice almost ruining a 2080 Ti by putting it back on. But they completed it um, very awesomely, um, That's and. Pretty cool they uh and it you know, worked it worked well yeah it worked <laughs> which is the crazy thing um so it worked it recognized it 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 put it as 14 gigabit but then they just manually overclocked which again if you're running 16 gigabit at 14 you're gonna your overclocking headroom is gonna be through the roof so they overclocked it um and like, they got it all the way up to 70 17.2 17. 17. yeah 17.2 
Um, and they have, uh, you know, some benchmarks and things like that. That's they're, awesome. They're calling it the world's first RTX 20 Ti Super, which... Sure. This is kind of like what we expect, although there might be uh, more CUDA cores unlocked and things like that on the 2080 Ti Super. Um, but that's just really cool. Hats off to these guys. Um, we have their video in the article if you want to check it out. Um, but, I mean, could you imagine just soldering this stuff? Like, no, not at all. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's, it sounds crazy to me. Like, I don't even want to. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm anxious about taking this cooler off of my 2070 Super, let alone desoldering uh, ICs and putting them yeah, back on the other card. You know, when we reviewed some um, NVMe coolers and like mm -hmm. even putting that on top of my NVMe, like I was scared a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to do this, and to have like I, I feel like I'm too jittery, like <laughs> like the, the solder, these little solder points and everything. Yeah. Um, it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, they did it. That's that's just really cool. Definitely check out the video. I, I just think it's awesome. I, I think that cool. uh the the community needs more cool things like this to happen. So so yeah, definitely uh definitely go ahead and check that out. That's really, really cool. Um, but talking about uh you know, super cards, it looks like uh nvidia could be some mobile chips huh yeah it could be oops wrong one could be <laughs> um releasing both rtx and gtx super cards for notebooks this is kind of expected is is because amd will be releasing their rx 5000 series on mobile uh we've seen the leaks we talked about them um there will be rx 5000 m series uh cards coming out so this is going to make it so, you know, the RTX 2060 Super Mobile obviously performs better than whatever AMD is coming out with. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, I didn't really... Again, this is one of those, do we really need a Super version in the mobile, you know, space? Yeah. But uh, it's all it's also kind of expected. You're you're always going to get a mobile version of, of what they've got out. I just think that... Uh, with the, the whole super line, just adds I some like, more com complexity to it. It adds more complexity. I like, again, we have talked about this on the desktop side too. I like that it gives the consumers more for their money, right? Yeah. Um, the 2080 shouldn't exist, as I talked about. The 2070 is great upgrade, 15% upgrade from the previous gen. Like, that's good to me. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's reactionary. You know what I mean? Um that's just all I have to say about it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's just reactionary to what AMD is doing, which is good. Uh, competition brings us brings us consumers yeah. better prices, better prices. Yeah. So. so so I'm happy about that for sure. Um, so yeah, and then uh, also on the graphics card side, we said we were going to talk about the RX 5500. Um, the guys over at Heiss. Is that how you say that? Heiss uh it's a general yeah, one, probably yeah so i said heist um they nice. got their hands on a rx 5500 it's an oem card um and they tested it against uh an aftermarket rx 580 and a gtx 1660 the non-super and it performed really well it, it's kind of like almost on the performance of say a stock rx 580 and i think that's good for amd because that line that what was before the 580 the 480 right 480 yeah yeah and like that's been the same product right yeah they just yeah <laughs> yeah slapped a new badge on it yeah it's been the same product and they, to, just to get out of that it's on the new architecture you know what i mean um yeah. i think that's going to be killer for amd i think a lot of people have been wanting lower cost amd cards i know the the 5700 and 5700 xt aren't terribly expensive but there are people that want to spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks on a graphics yeah. card. That's what they have. Um, and they're AMD fans and they want this. They've been waiting for this. Um, yeah, they'll hold out, you know, run their, keep running their, you know, 480 or 580 or whatever they've got. And Yeah. Um, so uh, they did run it. It, it like I said, performed right, up, right about to an RX 580. Again, it all depends on the game that they, they tested on. Because this is out here, it's in the wild, uh, in the chat asking, like, when... Yep. It will come out. I would it's say pretty, pretty soon. soon. Um, yep. You know, 
Uh, that, that is definitely, like I said, it definitely has to be coming out soon. Um, we have a link to their review. It's not like a super in-depth review, but it I mean, has I can see it coming out before Christmas. I can see it coming out for, before Christmas. Um, just for the fact that like it's a lower cost part, a lot of people would be buying at Christmas time. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we see it. Um, it's exciting. I think I, I, you know, for us, like the low end isn't super exciting, but I think it, it's exciting for a lot of people because that market's it, so huge. Yeah, which, that, which is what we always forget as enthusiasts. You know, we focus on like the the mid to high range enthusiast parts, but that beginner level entry level market is so big that yeah yeah it's just like i said it's it is it's the bigger market and i think amd has hopefully they have a strong product um yeah. i've got i've got asked twice this week what you know is the 5700 actually a good card like should i actually get that i'm upgrading like and i said yeah like for the price compared to a 2070 or 2070 super like it's a good card yep. like amd has a has their shit together <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. um you know so yeah i think for the lower end this is gonna be great for amd it's just another win for amd um so yeah so check out like i said we have linked down here at the bottom to their uh testing and things like that you can check it out um but hopefully we see it soon and hopefully we get a couple into review and we'll, we'll tell you what we think about it so pretty uh excited to see if that happens and uh this was really interesting this week. Um, we typically don't talk about other websites or anything like that, but uh, finally, you know, this week, both high-end desktop parts yeah. came out. So we have Intel, Intel and AMD. 10 series high-end desktop parts, as well as Threadripper 3. Both came out technically on the same day. Um, but a little bit of shifting of uh, release times, it sounded like. Yes. In the so... That so so Intel changed their embargo so that so that people would, could launch the reviews at midnight. Yeah, it was like super early. AMD's was like at 9 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it was because we didn't receive the products. I didn't know these specifics. But what that did is that made it so if you're a launch partner and you want to you you should have your review ready to go. If it's at midnight, have your review ready and Launch post it, it at there, midnight. Right. One, because <laughs> you want to like show the brand that, hey, yeah, I tested this, like it's good to go. Like, you know, you can count on me for launch day reviews. Secondly, is because of traffic. And if you're a review site, traffic, more traffic means more money typically. Yeah. Um, you're anybody. I mean, or if you're a YouTuber, just like, you know, uh, Linus was the one who really called out AMD on this or called out Intel on this is that you want, as soon as you're able to post it, you want it you online want it because you want those views. Yep. Um, so what Intel did, which is very shady, I would say, or as Linus said, pathetic, as, as it says <laughs> in the title, is that they changed their launch time to midnight, which basically meant if you wanted to be a launch review, meaning that at midnight your review was online, because of... AMD's NDA, which was hours later, you could not technically compare Intel's high-end desktop parts to AMD's. You couldn't. Yep. And the whole reason is because AMD is going to beat Intel. Right. And well, and the, and the sad thing is, is everybody sees through it, right? Like it's it's so not blatantly idiots. obvious. Yeah, right. and I mean, even Linus's video, he said, like, we're not idiots, and everybody's going to see through that. Right. Like they're launching on the same day. Why don't these reviews have Threadripper three in them? Well, yeah. And people are, the, the thing is that Threadripper comes out later in the day and it's going to then have those, those Intel yeah. graphs anyhow. So uh, you're, you're, you're not doing yourself any good. It just makes you look worse. Yep. I mean, we get it. Like you're stuck, like your, your process notes stuck and you're going to have to like eat shit for a year, you know, in, in, right. in these spaces. And that's fine. You've already dropped your prices, which is great. Um, doesn't make you look so crazy. But yep. like, just like man up and just, you know, but again, they have shareholders. They There's all these things that come right. into it. I don't know who made this decision at Intel, but any smart person who like knows the space as far as like the enthusiast space would just be like, no, like yep. we got to take this hit. It's still a good part for the price, you know? Sure. Um, 
and what you're getting and everything like that and what it offers, but it's, it doesn't beat the competition and we're going to have to take that for a year until we get our process node figured out. Like, yeah, you know? it's, it's just crappy business practices. But like you said, you know, just uh, it's, it's playing with numbers and, you know, just not giving the whole story to your potential consumers, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not, I, I, I mean, we've seen this before, but not this egregious, I would yeah. say. Um, it's just not great. So, so yeah, that's all I really have to say about it. I agree with Linus and and what he what he's saying. It doesn't make again any as when he did say in his video, uh, which we do have linked in our show notes, is that when talking about products, the launch reviews are the ones that get referenced the most. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so oh, you know, here's a review of the ten series. It's a launch review, so it doesn't have the graphs for for the previous one. So those are the reviews that, that get referenced the most when comparing and when talking about a product. And if those right. graphs aren't there, it makes your product look better than what it actually is. Um, so yeah, so I, I agree with him. I think uh, people at Intel are probably pissed that he put this video out. Um, but I mean, the writing's kind of on the wall, I would say. Yeah, I think if, if the big names like Linus and you know everybody else that kind of chimed in with their opinion didn't do that then they'd be accused of you know being sellouts or taking yeah. intel's cash and uh in order for them to stay uh you know keep their integrity i think they have to call it out so. yeah yeah and old man said uh competition's good i mean yeah, yeah that's what it's about it's like we had i mean i remember the wars between all the companies back in the day and it's good to have that but when you want to like not cheat because they're not cheating technically but right, like they're, yeah, they're to deceive your own customer yeah. to say we're faster and again we saw it with i mean in, in the thing about intel is they've had this kind of like thing going on for like the past year and a half remember like the five gigahertz chip mm -hmm. that was running on like a industrial Super, grade yeah, yeah. cooler i mean right. these things you're not fooling anybody yeah like we're enthusiasts like we understand that you're having a problem and like that may that might make us not buy your product but for you to do these things make us that makes us not like your company and not want to support you when you do have a good product right that's the difference i would say um but yeah so on a better news uh again amd did launch their two chips um which were the which i always 30, forget 60 and 39 30, 3960 and 3970x um 24 core 32 core but they did announce that they will this is have nuts. a 64 core Threadripper 3990X. We heard rumors about it, but we didn't know if it was true. They said, yes, this is coming out. It's coming out in 2020. Um, 64 core, 128 threads, 288 megabytes of total cache, 280 watt TDP. No word on clocks or anything like that or price. The 32 core is $2,000 or 1999 so 64 core could be four thousand dollars. I don't I, think. I, I bet it'll be thirty five hundred. Thirty four ninety nine. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. Um, twenty twenty, possibly CES. Oh man. I, I, yeah. A twenty two. That's twenty twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it technically is. Um, two hundred eighty watt TDP is pretty nuts. That's, that's that's high. I mean, for for uh, high end desktop, yeah. But. Uh, you know, you go again. You go back to sixty-four cores. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So it, that's it's pretty just, cool. It, it seems like this week's sort of like a win for AMD on on all fronts, and it has been for a while. And they're just doing the right things. Um, you know, we it could be three years down the line, and they might have a problem with their process node. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um, it, things happen. It's just again, I just I don't like the whole idea of Intel just trying to trick us because it's it's not a trick. We're smart. Um, right. and if we're not smart, people, other people are, and they're going to put it out there that things are going on. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, that brings us okay. to also another AMD thing. Um, AMD Zen 3. has completed their next, uh, CPU architecture, um, or this design phase. They haven't, uh, or I guess they haven't put out the chip, but the design phase right. is done. Um, so they, uh, held a presentation at SC19 conference, um 
that talks about high performance computing and everything like that. Um, they said that the Zen three architecture design phase has been finished. Um, and this is, you know, now AMD is on that TikTok phase. So right. you see a, uh, a die shrink and then you see an architecture change. Same thing. Um, so Zen three will be seven nanometer or they're going to call it seven nanometer plus cause it's an improved process node. Um, and that you should see around 15% uh, faster IPC, which again, makes sense, right? We're not going to see that massive jump right. uh, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's great. They're, they're on track. And that's the biggest thing with these is like, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just saying it feels like they like have a solid plan moving forward. Right. Like, and they're just doing good work and have a solid plan and are like, confident in their upcoming products it's really nice to see well that's the thing is too it's like you remember they basically took two years off on yeah. the cpu side uh, you know they they did their homework and i think are uh reaping the benefits of it now yeah yeah and they're making the other guy not, not look very smart um <laughs> yeah. you know um but yeah i mean that the, they took the loss you know what i mean they took the hit because they were there was no competition and then they they're coming out with all this stuff and it's finally Say okay, it was worth taking the time off to re completely redesign our CPU architecture yep. and do all that, and now it's in the place. So, I I don't think we'll see Zen three later in twenty twenty. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, you won't see anything. Into you won't see any products like you're not going to see this at CES or anything no. like that. You're not going to see any products um, for a while. So, but la later <laughs> in two thousand twenty, you might see something. So definitely uh, keep that in mind. And uh, that brings us to gaming. We have three gaming stories this week. Um, we talked about Half-Life Alex um, last week. Yep, just briefly. Briefly uh, about it coming out. Um, they announced their trailer, which, oh my God, it looks awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, it makes me want to get the game. It makes me want to get a, a VR headset for this Ooh. game. Yeah. But like I guess that's the whole idea of behind this game <laughs> uh, yeah maybe sell some more headsets yeah. i know i got kind of pumped and back into a vr thing so like last friday i cleaned up my room got it all situated so i, I spent like four hours friday night in vr and then saturday night i did the same thing and so now i'm like uh maybe i maybe i should uh pre-order this uh half-life alex the, the trailer is so good it makes you want to uh, immerse yourself back into this yeah back into the the, the Half-Life half -life world, world yeah. and everything. Um, and then they also released this uh, at the, I think it was the game or the game awards or whatever. They released this video um, talking about how the game came to light and everything, which is really interesting if you want to hear the story. Um, and then uh, they basically said, yeah, you can't play the game with keyboard and mouse, which I was really sad about. Um you know what I mean? Even if I lost some of the functionality, I think I would play the game with the keyboard and mouse just because oh, yeah. Half-Life. Um, so yeah, so definitely check that out. Um, Nelson That's in the true. chat. Um, AMD kicking Intel's ass. Yeah, AMD is uh, kicking Intel's ass. Um, you know, so yeah, it's uh, they're, they're doing good stuff. So so yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, like I said, I just, ah, man, did you, could you see me buying a, a headset for this? Uh, just for that i mean i don't the, like i wouldn't recommend anybody buying a headset to play one game especially one that you haven't even played and is only available on pre-order but yeah. if you're like already interested in vr i see i'm not um and have you know tried it out maybe at a friend's house or demoed it somewhere and we're liking it i could see it being worth it yeah so. it's just the the trailer like, uh, guys i i would just check out the trailer um, and then old man says that uh, <laughs> the five dollars Steam controller. Yeah, Steam controller. I yeah. had, I I still have one. I don't know where it's at. I have two I or three it, of them. I used it for a while. I, I used it with my uh, Steam machine, my old. Uh, oh, you had a Steam my, machine. Huh? My Alienware Steam machine that I had. So yeah. I yeah um, I picked them up at, on Black Friday sales previously, right? I got those, and then I think I have a couple Steam links as well. Okay, they've, yeah. They've kind of canceled that, but I think I picked those up for like two yeah. bucks last yeah i think i got they were I so got my cheap steam, i got my steam link for i think five dollars so yeah. yeah so yeah um but yeah like i said out this game just looks so good and again if you watch the trailer it just brings you back into the half-life world and it's like 
I want this on a PC game. But hopefully, maybe this again, I, I, VR games aren't going to sell as well as like an old PC game. But if, yep. if this is like a thing, maybe we will see a Half Life Three. Yeah, I hope. Cool. Yeah, um, and of course, this brings Valve back into like actually coming out with games, which is yep. a good thing too. So, um, so yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. Uh, I think. We'll be we'll be buying you the game whenever it comes out, so you can tell us about it. So sure, we'll stream yeah. some of it or yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Um, also talking about sales, there's so many sales. I just saw Steam announce their fall sale as well, but Humble, uh, the the people behind Humble Bumble or hum, not Humble Humble <laughs> Bundle, sorry, uh, Humble Bundle, uh, they have their own store as well, and they sell yep. a ton of games. And um, they're having their sale, and there's some interesting games that are on sale that weren't before ha, have never been on sale. Uh, one of them is Red Dead Redemption Two. It is, I believe, uh, 47 dollars forty seven ninety nine. Yeah, 40, I think it's fifteen percent off. Um, yeah. of the normal price. They have a ton of games. Outer Worlds is, or no, that's 20% off. Outer Worlds is 25% off as well. I don't think that's ever been on sale either. Um, but a ton of games are on sale right now. There are sales across, I think, all platforms. I saw Epic is having a sale too. Um, so there's a ton of games that are on sale. Cool. Um, just like, you know, Borderlands 3 is also on sale. No Man's Sky. Uh, Hotline Miami is under $3. It's usually 5 Um, So yeah, so just worth checking out all the all the game stores if you see a game um that's on sale you definitely pick it up because it's like i said just a lot of a lot of games on sale uh for sure so i, I more more games you buy and don't play yeah i was just thinking i was like <laughs> I, I want red dead redemption 2 but i just don't think i'll play it um and the reason why i won't play it is is our next story uh oh, yeah. is uh is that uh jedi fallen order is the fastest selling star wars game ever um EA and it's a single player, selling, but still, yeah, yeah and EA's. a single player, yeah, and it's single player. Um, and I did pick it up. Was that yesterday? Did I uh, that yeah, yesterday? yesterday. Yeah, so I, I was, I did buy, I bought a new TV yesterday. I bought all kinds of stuff yesterday. <laughs> I bought this game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I picked it up. I played it for about a half an hour. I love the story already. It's just very immersive. Like I felt like I was playing. Like the best thing about single player games is that you feel like you're playing a movie, right? Like you feel mm -hmm. like you're in the story, you're part of it. And I felt immersed. And that's the biggest thing is like, I didn't feel like I was sitting here at my computer. If that makes sense. Like I feel like I felt like I was in the story. Um, so that's, what's great about this game so far. Yeah. Um, I'll update you guys next week if I get some more time to play it. Um, but yeah, so they said, um, so EA LucasArts and respawn said that it's the fastest selling digital launch for a star Wars game in its first two weeks. Um, EA also said it's the fastest selling PC game for the company in all distribution formats in the same two weeks. Wow. That's, that's really impressive. Um, I think the biggest thing is like battlefront was cool when it came out, but so many people complain there isn't a single player mode. Like we want like right, star we want Wars, the, single, the story, so the star Wars is such a story driven, you know, franchise. Absolutely. And like, you want to play as a Jedi and go through a story. Um, you know, yeah, no, it, it is cool. You know, I, I didn't play either one of the battlefronts um, and I kind of wish I did because I think they looked great and they still probably do. And the, the um, multiplayer aspect of those was amazing. Um, but I think this is something that we needed. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Like a good single player uh, Star Wars game. So like I said, I like it so far. I don't know. Like I said, I, I can't give you much more than that. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, but like I said, uh, I would recommend it so far if you're if you want a single player experience. That's the biggest thing too. Is like you kind of just want to like play a game. You don't want to play against other people and get when frustrated. You can put it down, and, come back to it. Yeah, which is kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. So if you haven't got it, I would suggest picking it up. I'll let you know how it goes as as I get through it in these next coming you know coming weeks and everything like that. Um, but yeah, and then um, the uh, old man said the Valve Index mm -hmm. is four ninety nine. Wasn't it a thousand? Uh, I don't think so. I thought it launched at a thousand when it was announced. I could be wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, old man also said the actor for Fallen Order is upset oh, uh, on Twitter because people are replacing his character with mods. <laughs> it was a thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, so it's four ninety nine now. Yeah. That's so. compelling. Um, but I, I don't think I'd pick it up. Um, but yeah, so uh, that leads us to what we have coming up next week. And I didn't get to it this week, so 
I will be checking it out next week. I'll be taking a look at Cooler Masters Master Air MA620M. This is their big boy CPU cooler. Um, it's two. It's a it's a dual tower cooler with a fan in the center. Has some RGB lighting and everything like that. Uh, looks really good. So I will have that for you guys. And then I'll be taking a look at uh, the HyperX Fury uh, RGB DDR4 memory. Um, so they've added RGBs to this. Um, it looks pretty good as well. So I'll have that for you. And then I will be taking a look at a uh, PCI Express 4.0 NVMe drive from Sabrent. And this one has a massive cooler on it. It is huge. Looking. It's big. Uh, it's huge. Uh, and it has heat pipes, uh, which I think is really cool and retro, I guess, for all of us old schoolers out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have that for you as well. Super fast. Uh, of course, it's PCI Express 4.0. Uh, so I'll be testing that on X570. So pretty uh, pretty pumped for that as well. Yeah. And uh, as we get to the end of the podcast, we talk about if we did anything cool, anything tech related. Did you uh, do anything, see anything, pick anything up? Uh, I saw Frozen Two in the theaters this week, last weekend. So that was yeah, uh, yeah, with the kids. It was actually pretty good. Um, I wasn't Kay- pumped. Kayla into it, asked but... me to like. She's like, I think she. I don't know if she asked me to go see it or she was gonna go see it with her friends. I was like, eh, I'll pass on that one. No, it's 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 good. It's fine. The soundtrack yeah. isn't as good as the first one. I haven't, I haven't but seen But I think the first it's a better movie either. than the first one. So, yeah. um, but I I've also been like. So a while back, I brought home like some VHS tapes and a bunch of like eight millimeter, like 90s Sony camcorder tapes. And I'm in the process of converting those um, and just getting them off of tapes and onto my NAS and onto the network just to. Now, how are, how are you doing that? Firewire off of the Sony camera. So oh, I have a Sony nice. camera hooked up to another PC with a, you know, a Firewire card. And the be- the thing that sucks about it is it's tape. So you have to like play Watch the it. tape to pull yeah. it. It's just like, it's, yeah. it takes forever. So I just like keep an eye on them. But I think I did 11 tapes last weekend. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So we'll get there. I, those projects are cool. And you like, you do want to save those memories. And of course the way to do that is to have a digital copy. Yeah. Um, because even the, the tape goes bad. Um, oh yeah. You know, yeah. I, I have some, some tapes that I found, um, that you know have definitely deteriorated over the years and lost lost some of the video but the audio portion of the tape is still there so yeah yeah that's cool i uh i did my 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 desk setup as i said yeah um you spent like a whole day rearranging your desk didn't you oh yeah <laughs> so that whole so if you guys watch the desk video which again is linked uh, it's not, yeah, it's linked in our show notes which are linked below if you're watching on youtube um that whole six or eight minute video took me literally all day i started in the morning i cleared out uh everything and, I, and of course as i'm doing it i have to shoot it as yeah, well you gotta so. shoot and set up the yeah yeah but lighting and camera the, the biggest thing was the, the cable management took forever but i'm so glad i did it like it looks so much nicer in here without cables everywhere everything has its own place it's just it's so great so that's pretty pretty much what i did working on reviews um and yeah, got cool. some more video, video content, review content coming out for you guys. Um, it is, uh, we, we started this last week, but uh, hopefully we'll continue it as yeah. long as uh, Ryan likes to play games. Uh, but we will be switching over to Twitch here. Um, it's twitch.tv slash Think Computers. Um, and we'll be playing some games. Uh, so hopefully we can watch Ryan be bad at games. And uh, I, I'll be joining him for a little bit over there. Um, so definitely uh, check that out after we get off here. If you are looking for us, which just think computers, all one word on your favorite podcasting app, website, whatever it may be. Um, So until next week, we will catch you guys later. See you.